It's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> so good. You want to stand with us as we give glory to God this morning? Let's turn my volume up. Life's awesome. God is so good. He's a God of love and he still performs miracles every single day. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no
God is for us. He never stop us. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what can say to kids? If our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can say? Just you. If God is with us, nothing can stand against. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. good thing. God is good, amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, we're dealing with some strange times right now, but you know what? Strange times have been been in the past and will be in the future, but you know what always stays the same? is Jesus Christ. You know, no matter what happens in this world, we know if we have Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, what? That we have what? Huh? Oh. Uh, We have an eternal way to glory one day in heaven, you know, no matter what happens. You know, The one thing that, you know, good news, I know we don't have a ton of people here today. If you're online, you can put some good news reports on this, uh, onto um, Cindy, right? Cindy's up there watching and uh, commenting along with those today. And, uh, but you know what? Hey, we're still here. We're still, as, as Mary Lou will say, we're what? That's right. Yes, that's a good thing. At the same thing, though, at the same time, you don't want to be upright and suck in air when you're 272 years old. <laughs> Okay, people that, you know, you know, we have all kinds of issues going on in our lives. You know, we're going from this place to what? Another place, you know? The world's been around for a long time. You know, I went to one year I was a, when I was a, a kid, a long time ago, I went on a trip with a youth pastor. He took us to a graveyard. And I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. And he said, go out and find the oldest gravestone. So we all ran, all those teenagers ran. We probably did some things you probably shouldn't do in a graveyard. I don't know, running over things and... And we found this, and so we were supposed to find the oldest gravestone. Uh, and uh, there were th- thousands there. It was at a big grave, gra- graveyard in uh, Monroeville, Pennsylvania. And uh, so it, he gave us X amount of time. We came back, and everybody said, oh, we found this one. We found this person. The oldest one we found, and the oldest one found, I think it was 202 years old. Uh, that's a long enough. And it was like, I was like, ooh, that's, that's pretty old. And the youth pastor made a comment. He said, you know what? That's how long they've ever been in heaven or hell. It's like, oh, wow, you know, you know, it it gets you thinking about how short life really is, how this life really isn't all that is to it. You know, yeah, there's things are going to go wrong in life. Things are going to happen. You know what? The only point about this life is having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then, then for you live in heaven where he provides for you the rest of your life. And you have all the great stuff you could ever want forever and ever. Isn't that awesome? Or you make a choice and you live the you fall forever, burn forever, scream forever, see nobody else forever in hell. So that, that's the two choices that, that this life is for. It's very short. And once you get there, it, it, it doesn't matter what anything else that happens in this life. Because you know what? Once you come to Jesus, your body is his. Do what he wants to with it. And uh, we're going to talk about that later on today with our word of the year. And, uh, but God is, God is good. And he's still doing good things. Uh, since we have a small crowd today, I can say, how's Jessica doing? Kidney stones are never fun. Off and on, yeah. That'd be expected. Uh, so, uh, so, but the surgery went well and all that. You, 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 they can go good. Uh, so, uh, so we have a lot of uh, crazy things going on in this time and things like that. We praise God that the surgery went well. And uh, so we're going to, in a few minutes, we'll have some prayer requests and things like that. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, do our um, announcements for, the, for this week. I will make a, 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 a uh, what do you call it? Um, this Disclaimer. Uh, we're hoping to do what these things say. Okay? <laughs> yes, Larry. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. So God is still working today. So here we go with our announcements this week. Have the computer on? 
Happy Sunday. I hope you're having a spectacular day so far. But now, before we continue, here are a few things we've got going on. Tonight, we've got Impact Youth and Deep Impact coming back for the first time this year in 2021. And to celebrate, we're going to be having a none other than a pizza party. So Deep Impact, we're meeting today at 3 p.m. And Impact Youth, we're meeting today at 6 p.m. So remember, there's going to be a pizza party to celebrate our first gathering of the new year. And it's going to be so much fun. So I'll see you guys here today at 3 and at 6. I'll see you there. And also tonight, starting at 6 p.m., Pastor Devin's got his class on hearing the voice of God. And we've only got five more weeks left of this class. So it's coming to a close. So you're going to want to make sure you you're a part of it for the rest of these five weeks because it is going to be incredible. So again, that's tonight at 6 p.m. Pastor Devin's class on hearing the voice of God. See you here. Come on out to the church this Saturday, the 16th, from anywhere between 5 and 8 p.m. You don't have to stay the whole time. But what we're going to be doing is part of our Jeremiah 2216 project this month is going to be writing cards of encouragement to every single resident in the nursing homes in our area. We're going to have tables spread far and wide, so it's all set up for the regulations that are going on. And we will have snacks, importantly. So come on out and Anytime between 5 and 8 p.m. this coming Saturday to be a part of blessing the hearts and lives of the residents at the nursing homes in our area. So again, we're going to be writing some cards of encouragement, letting them know that they're loved, and we are going to be shipping those out, mailing those out, so that every single resident gets a card of encouragement, and it's going to be great. So be a part of it this month, this Saturday, the 16th, for Jeremiah 2216. It's going to be amazing. The time's almost here. Our Bible Book Club is starting next Sunday, January 17th, on the book of Hebrews. And what we're doing is here, we're reading through the book, we're picking out 30 of our favorite verses, and the person who picks out the most of the same verses that Pastor Devin picks is going to get a free meal anywhere in western Pennsylvania and it's going to be super easy it's just a little over one chapter a day and then you can just pick your 30 verses and you might be a lucky winner of a free meal anywhere in western Pennsylvania and along with that you are going to gain so much wisdom and so much knowledge from the book of Hebrews it, it is going to be great so our Bible book club on the book of Hebrews is starting next Sunday so read up pick your verses and get ready to rock and roll this Wednesday, our Wednesday night recharge services are back. And there is going to be a pizza party to celebrate for everybody. There's going to be a pizza party for the children. And there's also going to be a pizza party for the adults. Praise the Lord. So, children's ministry. Your Christmas party is going to be that night. So, this Wednesday. So, remember to bring your Christmas exchange gifts. And it is going to be so much fun. So, remember, that's this Wednesday. January 13th, our recharge services back right here in the church at 6 p.m. and pizza for everybody. Back here in the back of the sanctuary, we've got the Spice of Life School of the Bible. And one of the classes that we've got back here right now is a work study on the book of Galatians. Now, Galatians only has six short chapters, so you're going to be able to breeze through this in no time. So in here, there's so much knowledge, so much wisdom and insight, and asking you questions that maybe you haven't thought of before. So you're not going to be disappointed by this. So come on back to the back of the sanctuary, the Spice of Life School of the Bible, and get your class on Galatians today. And also on January 24th, Pastor Devin is going to be giving out certificates for those of us who have completed Spice of Life classes. So if you want to get those certificates, turn them in by next Sunday, the 17th, so we can get your certificates. And those are going to be handed out on January 24th. So turn in your classes. here at 
the church. So if you've ever wanted to take your frustrations out on Pastor Devin, that is going to be the day. So on February 6th, we're going to get together from noon to 3 p.m. and play some knocker ball. And if you don't want to play, that is okay. It'll be just as fun to come and watch everybody get knocked around. So again, that's February 6th from noon to 3 p.m. Knocker ball. It's going to be so much fun. I'll see you here. All right, remember the four things that God asked us to do this year, which are, we're going to be reading through the book of Acts together, and we're also going to be spending quality time together as a church family, like we're doing on February 6th with Knocker Ball. And also, we're going to be asking ourselves every day, in every situation and circumstance, what would Jesus do right here and now? And also, we're going to be giving to the Water Project, which is building new wells and planting new churches in Africa, and that is so amazing. So, those are the four things that God asked us to do this year. Stick to them. God bless. And now that you know absolutely everything that's going on, let's get back to the service. All right. So, uh, we have something really fun going on in a few weeks. Like I said, everything you just saw was subject to change, depending on how things are going on. Uh, we were planning, I do have one thing to say, we were planning on having our Christmas, we were talking about having our Christmas dinner January 24th, but with so many people not feeling well, things like that, and uh, some might be better by then, some might not be. We don't want anybody to miss that. We are just going to have our next meal is going to be our Feast of First Fruits, which is on March the 7th, so we're just going to do that. So that's what we're going to do, just so you know. I know it was in our Last letter would be January 24th. It just makes sense at this time period to do that. I, I, I hate the fact that we lost our Christmas dinner this year. Uh, uh, but uh, hey, you know what? There will be more Christmases. And one day we'll get to have dinner with the, supper, with the marriage supper of the land. That will last forever. Now, that's another great thing about heaven. Think about it. When you get to heaven, you, you, every, you ever go to a feast, a meal, and it's really good food, and you eat, and then when you're done eating, You go, well, I can just eat a little bit more, right? And you go, well, I can eat a little bit more. And what happens, you then later on the night, you feel crappy because you ate more than you should have. And you can't say, well, and people really aren't feeling bad about you because you kind of knew it. You you know, you never over, you, you never get sick by eating too much because it accidentally happened. Okay, you know when you're getting to the tipping point. But it's just so good. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, I understand that. When you get to heaven, we're going to be able to do that in heaven and never get to that boiling point. We'll be able to do, eat as much as you want, enjoy as much as you want all the time. That's going to be an awesome time. All right, now we're going to have our, our offering time. Uh, and uh, so uh, for those of you online, I appreciate you watching online. Uh, Miss Cindy will show you how to give. Uh, you can just go to our website, which is www.mbchurchpunksy.com. We do appreciate you giving. We do have uh, bills to pay to keep things going and do the things that God wants us to do. And we want to continue doing some great things uh, for the Lord, and we thank you for that. You can also mail us at 2785 Walston Road in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. I know I'm taking a little more time with that because, well... There's not a whole lot of people in the sanctuary today, and that's okay. I thank you all for coming today. So we're just going to go and uh, give our offering. Let me just go ahead and give it in one of the boxes here up front, and uh, we'll spend a few minutes, and then uh, we'll uh, go on with the service. All right? Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We ask you, Lord, to give give to our offering today, Lord, as we just want to bless you, Lord, and do some amazing things. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Oh, before we go on, I do have one more praise report. This week, I had the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, president come come come, uh, come to the church on Monday, uh, Robert Cardamom, and he said, "I got a problem." And I said, "Oh, what's the problem?" He said, "I, I kind of volunteered you for something uh, without talking to you." <clears throat> I was like, "What do you mean?" He said, "Well, I, said, I was talking to this guy, and he has a foundation in uh, Du Bois, and they like to help people, and uh, they said." Uh, and he, he was talking, and he said, what's one of the needs in town? One of the needs in town is a lot of people that can't, you know, there's a food bank in town. I mean, there's people that don't have rides to it. And he said, uh, well, uh, uh, we don't have a way to get, there's like seven or eight uh, elderly families that can't go anymore because they don't have transportation or no one's willing to take them because of what's going on and all this stuff. And, uh, and, and so they, they, and they can't go, they can't get the food because of the rules. Uh, I don't understand how the food bank works. I just, I just know. And so he's telling me about this. He says, and so we were talking a few weeks ago, this guy, and he says, 
He says, you know, do you know anybody who would like to help out with this? I says, well, I know this one church in town that does a lot of things, and I know the pastor pretty well, and I, I think he would love to do it. And he said, okay. And, he, and, so, and so that was like three weeks ago. Uh, now, I know nothing about this conversation. And then last week, Rob call, Robert Cotterman calls and says, I need to talk to you. And he comes and tells me this whole story. He says, the guy comes to my office last week, Robert's office last week, and drops off a check for $1,000 for the church. And, I'm, and he's like, but I haven't talked to him whether he wants to do it or not. And what the foundation wants to do is, he, he, since we're willing to do it, he was willing to make a donation to our church. Now, right now, we didn't have church last week, so we didn't make any, you know, put that much in the offer. And he's like, so I, 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 I didn't know what to do, so I, I volunteered you without asking you. And he says, you know what? It's one day a month, starts in February. And I said, I think I can find one person to drive the van once a month to go pick up some people to get some food. Thank you for the check. Isn't God good? Money just falls from heaven. Oh, and in December, we got a check from Brackman. They, 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 wrote, they, wrote us, they wrote us a letter saying, uh, we know the pandemic's been doing this and this and this happening around. And uh, God just put it on our heart to write a check to your church of $2,250. So we've got $3,250 in the last three weeks from places we didn't ask for. You know what that is? God's saying that we should keep on doing what we're doing. Amen? So I encourage you to please give. Support the church. I mean, it's great that God's doing that. But imagine we can do with all, as we continue to give and continue to push forward and say, you know what? I, ooh, hang on. Wait for that. I'm going to complete that in a little bit at, at, at our, for our word of the year. All right, without any further ado, let's spend a few minutes just uh, giving our offering, and then we'll go right into worship. Won't be real long today. How could a free gift cost so much? All right. <laughs> How could my need be worth your love? Still you surrender broken on a cross. That was meant for me Enduring on to suffering To set his children free You set your children free With open hands, open arms Found the way to my conviction Open eyes full of tears for my Worship the Lord. Before we worship the Lord today, uh, I'm just going to have. We're not going to have a time we come forward and pray today because of everything that's going around. We're just trying to kind of keep it uh, hands free, for lack of a better word. Uh, pardon the pun. Uh, but what's uh, I want to pray for you all today, and we just want to pray for everybody in our church. Uh, on the back table, there's two cards back there. We have uh, James is in the hospital, and his son brought in some cards. If you'd like to sign it. And we can uh, mail it to him over at the hospital. That would be great. Uh, also, Vince is in the hospital and Russ London's in the hospital. We want to pray for them. And we have a lot of people who just aren't feeling well. And uh, we, we just want to uh, just pray generally over the church. If you're here today and you have a need or uh, you know someone who's not feeling well, uh, just raise your hand. I'm just going to pray for them today. 
All right, so we're just going to pray for them today, just a general prayer today, and we're going to have worship and then uh, into our message today. Dear Lord, we thank you for today, and ask you to bless those who are uh, just uh, been touched by this pandemic, who are just feeling sick, as this time of year always brings out a lot of sickness in, in the world, and in our, especially in our area of the world, being in the northern part of the United States. I ask you, Lord, just to bless each and every family, uh, to bring them uh, through the, whatever they're going through, to touch their bodies, to heal them faster than they could think, uh, to be a witness to how powerful our God is. And those who aren't uh, sick, Lord, to protect them and to help them, Lord, uh, just to stay safe and to stay healthy, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people said? Yep, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, worship the Lord this morning. God is so good, so rich in love. Far beyond anything that we can comprehend or understand. But Jesus gives us that understanding of love by demonstrating that so perfectly. So let's sing this out together. He is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree. eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us oh oh how he loves us He is jealous for me He loves like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of His winds and mercy All of a sudden Oh, how he loves 
he loves us all. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us all. You know, God's here. Amen? Amen. You can just be seated for a few minutes. A few minutes, yes. Yeah, just a few. Yeah, it's neat when we only have like thirty people in the building because they, uh, they 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 don't feel as inhibited. The inhibitions aren't there as much, <laughs> it's not, huh? You, you can if I'm only gonna be here like three minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, everybody's like, oh, you know, you, you, you'll see, you see. You never know what to expect from me. You, have you learned that in my five years here? That you're, that's why you asked. But God is good. You know, I could just feel God's presence in that song. It is something about being in the house of the Lord. You know, I thought about, you know, when you know, this thing broke out, you know, how many weeks should we go, this or that. But it's something about being in the house of the Lord with one another. We need to be around people. And it's an important thing. And, and for those who aren't here, I'm not criticizing anything. Hey, you need to be safe. You need to be there like that. But you know, we need to push through and do what God, you know, and say, hey, God, this is what we're doing for those who do need that. And for those who are watching online, we hope that God is blessing you. Because, uh, you know, it's not our church. It's not my church. It's God's, it's God's church, as always. Uh, today we're going to be talking about our word of the year. And, uh, and I thought about maybe should I postpone it, shouldn't I? But you know what? I'm not going to postpone it. Uh, because, first of all, we have technology. People can watch it today. Uh, I actually have a letter that I met out yesterday that talks about this sermon because it's important. But we're going to be talking about this message uh, more than just today. Um, but I want to go, before we get to a word of, our ye- word of the year, I want to go over some of our passwords of the year. Uh, 2016, it was, and give him no rest until he, what? Establishes. It's up here now on the front. We changed the front if you don't know, if you haven't noticed. Uh, and with all of our sayings and all of our words of the year, our questions and things that we want to keep in our, in our forefront. We have it on the back wall, but nobody looks at the back wall, so that's why we, I decided to put that up there and change the front around. I hope it looks good. What do you guys think there in the room? I think it has our Kellers, brings it into, into play. I want to thank Josh Greenblatt for the help in putting that together. Uh, but you know, the first year when God came, when I first came, he said, the first sermon I was here, he said, you know what? This is what we need to do. Don't give God rest till he what? Establishes means keep asking God. Keep saying, God, I need this. Keep going after him until he establishes it in your life. Now, why does he say that? Well, it's real simple. We might ask something and say, why isn't God doing that yet? It's not that he's not doing it. He's in the process of doing it. Just sometimes we forget that, you know, God doesn't always do things just like that because everything's just not right or we're not doing everything that's just right yet. And he has to mold us and shape us so, we're, so when the right thing happens for us to make the best for us, we're in the best possible position to receive it and go forward with it. The idea of giving God no rest keeps us in the forefront that God is still leading us into that point. You know what, more than ever, we cannot give God rest until he establishes, and what is that? That God is King of kings, Lord of lords over this community, and everybody knows it. Now, whether everybody accepts it, it's a different story. But we're here to tell everybody in our Punxsutawney area, the 17,000 people live in the greater Punxsutawney area, that they're going to know that God is King of kings, Lord of lords, and you have a choice. Bringing that to 2017's word about choice. God is asking, my son is the cause of your salvation. What have you done with him in your life? And that's over there now up front. That was our second word of the year. Uh, or or the first one was 2000, and this is 2017. That's the question we need to ask. What are we doing for Jesus? If he's the cause of your salvation, you should be happy, right? If you're going to heaven. You're not going to hell. You're going to heaven. You know you're going to have riches beyond imaginations. No more sickness. No more bills. No more bad things happening. Joy all the time. What a great place to be. We should be overjoyed. And we don't deserve that. Because of all things we've done wrong. But the wages of sin is death. But God says, I don't care. Well, he cares. But I paid the price for you. If you ask me, I'll forgive you. No questions asked. What an amazing thing. If you were God, put yourself reversed, if you were God and you had to look at every other person in the world and had the choice to forgive them or not, would you do it? The answer is you wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. I'm a great person. No, you wouldn't because we all know people that we would have a tough time forgiving. 
I don't want them with me in heaven because they did this, 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 and this. Everybody, everybody's done this, 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 and this to God. But he says, guess what? I don't care. I forgive you. That's a pretty powerful thing to think of. He did for you. And so the question was, we should always be asking, if Jesus is the cause of my salvation, what have you, what have you done with him in your life? Right now, the world needs to see Jesus more than ever. Uh, one of my last classes I did uh, for the headlines was uh, there's a, uh, a, a thing out by um, the Frank, Franklin Graham where people are more open to the gospel than ever now. Well, not so much to the gospel, to something supernatural. Because everything natural is failing them. But here's the thing, they're going to try a lot of things. They're going to try the witchcraft. They're going to try the occult. They're going to try these other, all these bunch of things. The question is, they, none of them have power, only who has power? Jesus Christ at last. And we need to, as a Pentecost church, be saying, hey, he's the cause of my salvation. We want to show that miracles happen. Prophecy is still true today. All the gifts of the Spirit are still in application. And we came to 2018, and it meddled down to one word over the next couple of years. 2018, the word was more. God said he wanted to bring more into our lives. And that was the first year that we started to see more coming. We saw more financially. We saw more people coming. We had the most salvations, most baptisms. All kinds of things started to happen. Because God wants us to have more. He wants to bless us. Why? Because if we're, He doesn't want us to be hoping to get to heaven. He wants us to enjoy our way. He wants us to be able to say, hey, look, look how great. Yeah, things are going to happen, but I'm going to bless you with more to show you're set apart from somebody else. You know what? And God told me that it wasn't a word for just one year, but all these words go together. Because you know what? He wants to continue doing that. He couldn't give us the word more first until we grapple with the first two words. Because if we didn't want to do anything with Jesus, why would he give us more? And if we're not going to give God rest to establish, then we're not going to get more either, are we? Because we're not going to be what? Keep banging on God's door. And then we got the 2019 word, was was Dangerous. That was a weird word. And God said, we wanted to be dangerous. We wanted to attack the kingdom. That's the year we started the Jeremiah Project and things like that. And from that, we've seen so many things happen. And we, done, we did missions trips and things like that. And we've taken the gospel to so many different places. We ramped up the Christmas blessing. This year, ministering to kids and, and families all over the world. And we're all back as a family. Most people are back. We're going to share pictures and stories from what happened in Jerusalem this year. Amazing things that had happened. I don't want to share that yet. I could do it online, but it's just not as good seeing it as a picture. Um, be good when you when you hear it live and in person. And uh, but uh, he wanted us to go out there and be that. And he told me put the words together. You want us to be more dangerous. Keep knocking on the door because that keeps God there. Because if God's with you, you'll be protected. Second, so you can be more dangerous, man. If Jesus has a cause of your salvation, you should want to be more dangerous to the devil to see what's happening. And that led us to the word of the Lord word last year. The word of the Lord. I think I said the word of the word, but that's not what it was. And last year's word of the year was, let's be reckless. And we sang the song reckless all year round. And reckless, you know, a lot of people say that's a terrible word, but you know what? It's, it depends on how your connotation is. Yeah, reckless driving, you know, you're out of control. But that's not really what the word reckless means. You know, reckless means that you believe or you do something no matter what anybody else thinks about it. God loves us recklessly. Like I said earlier, why would God love us? Why should God love us? There's no point to it because we aren't good enough. But God doesn't care what the world thinks. He loves us recklessly. The worst sinner in the world, a person could be in jail for 50 years, and they give the heart to Jesus, Jesus will accept them and forgive them. Why? Because he loves us unconditionally. But that person was a horrible person their entire life. You should just throw them away, God. God didn't make one human being to throw away. That's an amazing thing. I am so glad that God's love, the world thinks, is reckless. And God said last year to be recklessly in love with him. No matter what the world thinks, stay with him. And what happened in 2020? It was a great word because COVID hit. And a lot of people gave up on God. A lot of people gave up on church. God gave up. And you know, God's not doing this. A lot of people, including Christians, blame, where is God? I tell you where God is. The same place he's always been. Right here. With us. Did some amazing things. 
Up until this year, no one in our church really got sick of the COVID. I know we've had a few that have gotten sick, and a lot of people who are worried about it, and I, I know no one has gotten sick. Serious. Well, we have a couple in the hospital now, um, but they're all, as far as I understand, are doing better um, and look to make recovery. Well, why is that happening? Well, I have an answer for that later on. Uh, but you know what? God, he's still there and he's still doing things because he loves us so very much. And we need to hang on to him when no one else is. Because it's all over. God, people say, how did you get through that? Because I stayed recklessly in love with God. Because here's the deal. If you think you're going to understand everything that goes on, you're never going to understand everything that goes on. And if you try to understand everything about God, you're going to leave God because he's beyond you. And that brings us down. Oh, one more thing about being reckless with God. Interesting uh, thing. Gallup, which is, uh, which is a uh, uh, non-Christian polling, but our number one polling company in the country, does everything political and everything, has this Headline at the end of December. Only frequent church attendees avoided downward mental health trend in 2020. This blew away Gallup. They studied all kinds of different demographic societies. And every demographic in American society went down mentally. Felt depressed, felt oppressed, felt uh, hopeless in some way. Every single demographic went down except for one. And it wasn't those who called themselves Christians. It wasn't those who said they were a member of a church. Only the group, because they broke it down to all, I mean, it's, it's a huge breakdown if you want to see the whole breakdown. Only those who frequently attended church, meaning they attended two or three times a month, did not see their mental health go down. Actually, they found something else out. Their mental health, their outlook on life was considered good to excellent. They couldn't believe it. You know what God says? Hebrews 10, 24, 25. Don't give up meeting together somewhere in the habit of doing, but, can, but meet together in order to what? Encourage one another as the day approaches. See, we come to church, we still realize that God's on the throne. We still realize that we have somewhere better to go at the end. We can look at a healthy outlook on life saying, you know what? No matter what this world throws at me, I know Jesus is with me. I know what my end location is going to be. It's an amazing thing. So it leads us to how this year's Word of the Year, and this year's Word of the Year is also in a song that the worship team's now going to sing. So as we sing this, really pay attention to these words because they're so important. You can stand or you can...
It's a great song. Isn't that a great song? Amen? Amen. So, uh, anybody want to guess what the word of the year is? Refuse. refuse. Yes, that is going to be our word for this year that God gave me. <clears throat> and you might say, uh, I was actually talking to uh, one of our board members, uh, John uh, Rowan. Uh, his family's feeling under the weather, and so they're not here today. And I said, since you won't be here, I'll tell you what the word is. He says, last year was reckless, and this year's refuse. How does that go together? I said, Watch, sun, watch Sunday morning online, and you'll find out. Uh, but uh, it's like, how do these, all of these words go together? And uh, it's amazing how they do. <clears throat> Refuse, you know, it's, uh, what, what does it mean? It means it indicate to show that one is not willing to do something. It, it, someone's not willing to do something. A lot of times it has, what, a bad uh, connotation. Uh, they refuse, they're, they're, that means they're being stubborn, obstinate, and they're just not willing to get along with what's going on or things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, it, it, it's, it, it, that's how the world thinks of it. And, but you know what, we, 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 it, it can also be, refusing can also be a good thing. I refuse to, to do drugs. I refuse to let this person control my life. Refuse can be a good word as well. And God wants us to use it that way. He wants us to refuse what he's telling me. He wants us, we're in a pandemic, but he wants us in the panic that's going on, all the things that are happening, um, what's happening at Washington this week. Uh, you saw what happened there. You know what happened at Washington this week? Anybody know? Huh? Cop was killed, Cop was killed but there, that big riot, right? And all this stuff, right? All this stuff happened. You know what really happened on, on that? On one, it was Wednesday, right? Yeah. You saw fear. Okay? Fear that this is going to happen. Or fear that something's going to happen. You know, uh, pe- pe- people, right, they, 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 I know why they did what they did. But they did because of fear that, 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 that the other side's going to do this or do that. But you know what? Jesus Christ is who? He is the only Lord and potentate. He is our Lord, you know. We get our marching orders from Him. You know, it doesn't matter who's in the White House, you know what, God knew who was going to be there. He's, we're going to be okay. You know, we've had Democratic presidents. We've had Republican presidents. We've had good and we've had bad presidents. There could be a case that we've had all bad presidents, but we're not going to go there, okay? Uh, um, but you know what? We've made it through. You know why we make it through? Because God has our back. We don't need to lash out in fear because guess what? We serve the king of kings. And what's the worst thing that could happen to us? We die. Life's short, 0.23 seconds, right? Then we're in heaven. Worst thing that could happen. Oh, but I got to pay more taxes. I got to do this. I got to do that. Okay, it's, it's a temporary thing. You're not on this planet for a long time. And plus, guess what? It comes and goes. The economy still got to move on. People still got to eat and do all that. It, it, it's going to work out. Okay? And it's amazing how God will bless those who what? Touch him. He says, I will always what? Be there for you. And, we, and so what God's telling me with this word, he's saying, you know, in the midst of all of this, we need to refuse to be moved by what happens in this world. We cannot let the things that are happening around us affect True Christianity. 
Now, it's a very important thing I say true Christianity because a lot of people have an idea what Christianity is. Christianity is not what? Religion. It is not man's idea of what it is. True Christianity is, I, God, I do what you want me to do. Simple as that. It is a really simple thing. We simply do what God says. We don't try to make it up as we go. It's already been made up. It's written down, done. Okay? We just got, that's why we're doing the Bible book club. We're going to learn what this book says. Uh, next, we're going to start putting the book of Hebrews. Thank you so much for all those who turned in your 30 verses. You still have a week to go uh, if you want to be part of the contest that is going on. Um, but, you know, and that's why our original verse years ago, and give him no rest till he established, Isaiah 62, 7, is because, you know, we cannot do that. We, we cannot fail to do that. We've got to continue to not give God rest. As we see the world coming against us, we see Satan coming against us, we need to rise up even better now, in this time and age, because God is giving us an opportunity to show a difference between those who believe and those who don't. That's our verse right there, so you can see it up there, even though I had it up on the wall now. I forgot I had it on the screen as well here. But God could come through for us, for those who really love Him. Uh, on the December 23rd of my devotions, I was praying about, you know, what, how I was going to lay out the year and how things are. Usually God gives me a series and I go. On December 23rd of my devotions, I was there and all of a sudden God spoke to me. He gave me all 52 weeks. I've never had a 52-week planning calendar ever. Uh, you know, not that I couldn't do it, but it never works out. You know, I, I plan what I want. I can share over the years, I'll plan what I think is going to happen. Usually never works out. Uh, <laughs> um, but this time God came and says, I want you to do this, this. I want you to do there, here, here, here. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty cool stuff. So God has a plan for us. He is not forgetting us. All the promises he's made to our church. And, and, and that's why he wants us to really know him. And also why he gave us the uh, You Said series this year. And we're going to intersperse that through uh, the Bible book reading club. Because we'll find new verses where God, but you said. Remember I said I didn't find, I, we, couldn't, we couldn't preach on them all because there's so many. Oh, just going through Hebrews, there's a whole bunch there we're going to add into this. Um, but God gave us, you said, because he knew this stuff was going to happen, this pandemic, these things that were going to happen. So you can say, hey, but God, you, you said. God, you, you said. You know what? And hold God to it and give him what? No rest till he what? Establishes. And also we cannot take this time and fall back and say we're just going to uh, just do church and, and just wait and then start doing ministry again. Uh, we're going to start doing ministry. We're going to plow ahead. We cannot, we're gonna, we're not, I'm not going to say, hey, we're going to wait and, and see. You know, we might not do some of the fun stuff. Yeah, we've got to push the dinner off. We've got to push some other stuff off. But you know, we start to keep doing ministry because you know what? The world has no idea how short life is. They don't know idea how long life can or cannot be. Actually, life's very long because once you die, you go to heaven or hell, heaven or hell forever. Life actually, what we call life is very short. What really is life is the eternal spiritual life afterwards. That's where the real thing is. And we need to help people understand that. And we need to really get the word of Jesus out. And we got to really start doing that to those around us. Because we, we don't know when their last day is going to be. Remember we talked about last week. Spend every day what? Making a difference. Get up every day and say, can I make a difference in someone's life? If you did that... If everybody in the church did that for 100 days this year, we reached 20,000 people. Everybody in the greater Punxsutawney area would be reached. It's not that hard. Just decide to what? Make a difference with your life. And that way you honor Jesus. And so this year we're going to be doing some unique things, but this, this, today we're going to talk about one thing. But every first Sunday I'm going to talk about a different aspect of this word, refuse. And uh, it, it's really interesting. Um, and so February I have one in March and all that. And God gave me all 12 already, which is great. It's also scary at the same time. When I know what I'm going to say, uh, usually that week then something goes wrong because I, the hard part is figuring out what I'm going to say on Sunday morning and getting what God wants me to say. He's already laid out to me for 52 weeks what I'm going to say. That was great. It happened like an hour in, in my devotions. It's like, okay, cool. I can go with that. <laughs> But usually it takes me like 10 hours a week to get just one of those down. What am I going to do with the... I'm like, okay, you probably got something planned for me to do uh, <laughs> every week this year. I have no idea what that's going to be, but I'm looking forward to it. But we also have to go forward with ministry. One of the things we're going to be doing is wrapping back up the Jeremiah Project. 
And this Saturday is our next Jeremiah project. It's here at the church. It'll be in the gym from 5 to 8 p.m. You don't got to stay the entire time. Uh, If you can't come, I know some of you are sick out there. If you're listening online, uh, listen very carefully here. Go buy your own card or, or, or make up a card at home. Doesn't matter what. We're, and what we're doing is we're making cards for those people who live in nursing homes who can't get out. There are people who have been in a nursing home now for over a year who can't get out and people can't get in to see them. It's horrible. But you know what can get in? Mail. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to write a letter to each... And these are people who are... <clears throat> feeling depressed, hopeless, lonely, who needs someone to know they care about. The worst thing is, is before the pandemic hit, over 60, I say 60 to 70% of nursing home people rarely ever get a visit anyways. It's sad. I know because I used to go to nursing homes and I go see somebody from our church and they'd be in a room with their neighbor and, they would, and the neighbor would say, oh, I'm so glad you, and, and they'd tell me that no one's ever come to visit them. I walk through the hall and see people in the hall, and they would reach out and touch me. Oh, would you just talk to me for a few minutes? No one has seen me. And man, it's like, it's, it's sad. It's actually, it's a crime. If you have a family member who's in a nursing home, you don't go see them, you should go to jail. I mean, you can't spend 20 minutes a week to just go stop by and say hi. I mean, right now you can't. But it's terrible how we, how, how we treat our elderly in this country. It really is. It is sad. Am I telling the truth, Sharon? She, she, she works in the place. Where are you working now? Um, Jefferson Manor. Right Jefferson Manor. And it is so sad. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a card to all 200, 250 of them. I'm going to make 250 cards. And because of the pandemic, I'm going to pivot a little bit. If you can't come Saturday night, because we also want a fellowship, but if you can't come, we're going to have tables all around. And if too many people show up, we'll put tables in here. We'll use the cafe. Trust me, you won't have to be in spitting distance of anybody, okay? I promise you that, all right? And those snacks will be on the table, the cards will be on the table, the stuff to make them. We'll have pre-made cards. All I got to do is sign it. You have cards. You will have blank things. You can be creative if you want. Uh, so for those of you who aren't creative, like I said, we'll bring you ones. Just sign it because you know what? These people are people need to hear from somebody. And wouldn't it be neat? They got a card from this church who they don't even know. And it says, hey, I love you. Now, on each card, I'm actually going to put a little note inside that card, too, that's going to say, oh, by the way, it's going to be also for me, too, <clears throat> and I'm going to put in there, and it's going to say, remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and you are awesome. And if you need anything, don't hesitate to call. You can write to us. I'm going to put an address in there. And if you'd like to get a CD or a DVD of the service, let us know, and we'd be happy to send it to you. What if... Some of those people who are in those nursing homes, now I've been doing ministry for 29 years. I used to go to, I used to because I can't now. I love going to nursing homes. I love dealing with old people. I, saw, I love dealing with the cranky ones. And I just, how I, I why are you laughing, Mary Lou? A crank. A crank makes cranky. <laughs> and I love going because you know what, they're, they're, they're fun, they're, they're fun to, 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 to jab with. Okay. Because here's the deal, no matter how cranky they are, I'm always like this. You know, but God loves you. I love you. You know, Jesus, no matter what's happening, he still loves you. It, 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 it's just, you know, uh, and, and, and the, every time, they, they, they'll get, some of them will swear at me and use the F word and this and that. But every time I leave their room, they ask me to come back. You know why? Because they're starving for attention. What if those cards turned into... One person asking for the service. Or what if it turned into 20 come back and say, hey, I want to know about Jesus. And they get saved and go to heaven. These are the people that are on their last legs. Literally. We know these are the ones that are on their last legs. And so you know what? Jeremiah Project is about making sense and doing what makes sense. For some reason, this is like the retirement capital of Pennsylvania. I don't know why anybody wants to retire to Punxsutawney. But it's just the way it is. But if we could reach them, and they reach back to us, it'll be awesome. People say, how do you know it'll be effective? Well, here's how I know this will be effective. Because there's one thing that this generation that's in the nursing home understands is writing letters. They're not into the email. They're not into the Facebook and all for the most part. This is a a medium that they can actually use. 
that they prefer to use. Wouldn't it be awesome to see that happen? But I can't do 250 cards on my own. I mean, I can make my, my one little blog where I'm going to type it up and we have a little piece of paper we'll attach to the card. That's easy. But to write a personal, but you know what? There's something about that personal written message that's amazing. You can bring your kids to this event. Because you know what? They, they, they can write something too. And if you came and you spent, like, you could do one in like a minute. Okay? But if you can't come because you're sick, but you want to be part of this, make someone your own and mail them to the church or drop them off to the church. I'm going to send this out the first week of February. So I'm going to give us a couple weeks to get this all done. So anybody in the church who wants to be involved, who's listening now online or reads the letter this week, though the letter doesn't say to the, to the, to the seventh, but I'll have it on my one call this week. Uh, for everybody. But we want to be able to go out and reach as many people as possible in a way that makes sense. Because we're not going to refuse. If, if they say we cannot reach these people. Guess what? We can reach them. There's more than one way to reach somebody. And I think God, and God, and when we talked about this project, when Kyle thought about this idea, I give Kyle credit for the idea. It just boomed in my heart. That is the right thing to do right now, something we can do that can affect people who really need Jesus right now. What if we turned the crankiest person in a nursing home to Jesus? Wouldn't that make a difference to every other nursing home person in that nursing home? You know, they see the difference. And that's what we want to do. So I hope you'll be part of that uh, with me as we go and minister to the loneliest segment in the population right now. So that's this Saturday. Come live. There'll be snacks. There'll be, there'll be tables set up way far apart from one another. We have plenty of room in the building to put people apart. If we have to, we can use the downstairs. It'd be great to see 100 people show up. We'd be done in five minutes. You know, there's 240 of us at the church. If 100 of you showed up, everybody did two cards. We'd be done. That'd be great. And we'd be touching the heart of Jesus. So many churches are just hanging on. I don't want to just hang on. I want to win souls for Jesus Christ. Because otherwise, why are we here? Why are we giving offerings to this church if we're not out what? Trying to ransack the kingdom of hell. So I'm going to refuse to stop reaching out. We're just going to find creative ways to do it. This is creative way number one. What is creative way number two? Don't know. If you got an idea, let me know. We got until um, middle of February to think of the next one. All right? Does that make sense? All right, cool. All right, so we're going to now, so we're going on today with our, our, our lesson. Today, our first lesson on refuse, and it's from a very familiar story in the Bible. And it's from Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits, and it's width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dora in the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather all the people to come to the dedication of the image which the King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Everyone came. If you're reading in your word, uh, that's not what that verse says. It's just really long, won't fit on the screen, and that's really what it boils down to. Okay? Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony, with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that the king Nebuchadnezzar set up. And moreover, whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So what happens here is uh, the, God is telling us this week, and our first refuse message, refuse to bow down to the pressure. A lot of people think this, this story is about, uh, about, uh, about not bowing down to an idol. No, it's really not what it's about to. It's about the pressure that was put on them not to bow down. If you don't bow down, we're going to put you in a fiery furnace. We're going to kill you. That's a lot of what? Pressure. What's happening today? The pandemic's put a lot of pressure on people. But before the pandemic hit, there's been a lot of pressure on people, isn't there? You know, society, you know, if you don't, you don't th believe a certain way, you don't talk a certain way, you don't do things a certain way, 
Okay, there's pressure on you to do that, right? Well, how about financial pressure? You know, financial pressure. I do a class on finances. It's amazing. You know, you know I, a lot of people's finances could be cleared up real fast by sitting down and setting their priorities, doing two things. Number one, putting God first in their finances. And number two, by seeing what you really need to make you happy. A lot of times, financial pressure comes on, well, I got to keep up with the Joneses. You know, and then what happens? You know, you spend money that you really don't need, and you get, you get stuff that you really didn't want, but you thought you needed to have and had to have, and then you, and you make sacrifices not to have that, or, and then we have people to do things, and then what's, what's the most important, precious commodity we have? Our kids, right? But then you have people to go out, and, but they'll, they'll work two, three jobs, what, to, to, so they can have the lifestyle they have. You know what? If you're never home to enjoy the lifestyle that you're buying for yourself, you don't have a what? A lifestyle. You know, we've got to rethink our priorities in life, and we let a lot of things squish us. And it makes us, and money pressures make us do a lot of uh, unusual things. That's just some of the pressures that are in this world. And these Hebrew children, they're through that. And uh, let me tell you about their pressure. Therefore, at a certain time, the Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, symphony, with all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down shall be cast to the fiery furnace. There are certain Jews who you set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave command <coughs> to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, It is true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up. Now, if you're ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, and symphony, and all kinds of music, fall down and worship the image which I have made good. <clears throat> but if you do not worship, you will be cast immediately into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Wow, that's a lot of pressure, right? I mean, you're not just, now we deal with things that might happen in the future, Right? How many people go insane by what bad thing might happen that hasn't yet happened and might not happen? These three boys, not only are they told what's going to happen, they're put right in front of the king, right in front of the furnace, say, do this or that. They get to see it right in front of them. <clears throat> <clears throat> now these Chaldeans, they grew up with them, learning the ways of the, the, the Babylon. They were stolen from, from Jerusalem as the best of, to be put with the best of Babylon to grow them up in the ways of the Babylonians. So they're, they're, they're possible people they grew up with and friends and they were taught within the same school, whatever you want to call it. They're turning them in. <clears throat> that's a lot of pressure that's on them right there and then. You know? And we go, oh, the pressure. Well, change places with these three Hebrew kids at that moment in time. You ever heard the saying, you really don't know what pressure is till you face it? They were facing it right up, in, right up in front of them. Now, the easiest thing would have been, what would be the easy thing to do? Oh, wow, uh, you know, we, we love God. He knows we love us. So you know what we're going to do? We'll just bow down now. Because, you know, we're, we're in Babylon, so you do, do what the Babylonians do, right? You know, when you're in Rome, you do what the Romans do, right? And, and, and we'll just go back home afterwards and pray for forgiveness and all be good. You know, a lot of Christians do that. Well, I'll do what the world wants me to do right now. Because it, it'll, it, it, it'll be what's best for me right now. It'll be best for my job, best for my family, best for <clears throat> my relationships. <clears throat> And then later on, I'll fix it with God. Two things wrong with that. <clears throat> there might not be a later on. That's a good one. You might not have a later on. That's three. So you got one I didn't have. Might not be a later on. 
you might not do it later on. <clears throat> we have, every human being suffers from short-term memory loss. We all forget about things that we should do and then don't get around to it. Amen to that. But here's the other one. If you do it, knowing later on you're going to go to God and ask for forgiveness, you're doing it what? You're purposely knowing it's wrong. You're not like accidentally sinning or just like in a moment sinning. You're actually processing through your head that you're going to do this wrong thing against God because of the pressure of the world and then later on I'll go back and do it. You know what that's called? No. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. The only sin that won't be forgiven. That's hard, isn't it? That's what it means. It's when you decide that you're going to do something when you absolutely, you know, when you sin, we're going to sin. And we're going to sin in moments. And God's going to forgive that. He has no problem. But when you intentionally say, I'm going to sin in order to make things better for me in, in the face of God, what's that? What's, that's, the, that's the literal definition of the word blasphemy. That's what blasphemy means. And right now, we're under a lot of pressure. A lot of Christians have bowed down to it in their lives, different places. Well, I, I know I shouldn't do this, but I, I have to because I'll lose my job. Okay, great. That might happen. That might come to that. These guys face the fiery furnace. I've had that happen in my life. I had a chance one time. I had a pastor who wanted to steal $109,000 off the church. And I was the chief financial officer. He came to me, asked me to write a check to staff. He wanted to go down. He had a building that was owed $3.8 million on the building. He didn't, he didn't go into the debt. He inherited the debt. I came on board and I helped get him out of it. I actually got him a million dollars from a land sale and all this. Things were fine. We had $557,000 in the bank. It wasn't, we, we, we weren't hurting. Our mortgage was $20,633 a month. We could pay it for quite a while. We were bringing in eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000 a week. It wasn't like it was like horrible. But he decided he didn't want to pay it anymore. And he asked me to write a check to the whole staff for three months' pay. <clears throat> we were going to go down the road three miles, start another church debt free. <clears throat> That's funny. You're like, I told this story four years ago. <clears throat> <clears throat> but most people in the room weren't here four years ago. That's why I can tell it. And I said, and so he came to me, and I had a big decision to make. Because you know what? My check was like 13000 and some dollars. I could use $13,000, Lord. We we're going to move down the road and keep, bring the whole church, keep our same salaries and everything. This would have been great. <clears throat> I was tempted. But you know what? The Holy Spirit was dealing with me. Because you know you're going to sin. You, you, you had that rumbling, right? That's how you know you're doing something wrong. The Holy Spirit gives you that rumbling because he wants you to not do the stupid thing. But there's one thing about doing the stupid thing in the heat of the moment or just doing something stupid on stupid. It's something to actually plan out doing wrong. That's a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. It's when you plan to go against God on purpose. Now, just so you know, the only way it's unforgivable if you don't ask for forgiveness. He will forgive it. You know, it's when you get to the point where you won't ask for forgiveness. So the problem is when you do that, you rarely ever do ask for forgiveness from it because you, you made all this thought to do this that you're really not going to go back and re ask for forgiveness. That's the danger. That's why God put that in the Bible. Because you're probably never going to go back and ask for forgiveness for it. So I had a choice to do that or not. And my wife went nuts because I was back and forth, back and forth. You know I was back and forth? Because I knew I shouldn't. It was wrong. But I wanted the money. Yeah, this is great. We're still in the same church. Just move down the street. This is great. I'll get an extra $13,000. This is wonderful. But no, I shouldn't do that. I'm like the, the good angel and the bad demon. You know, that's actually a real thing. That happens. The devil speaks in your ear and, the, and, the, and Jesus does. Neither one can influence you. 
Okay? They can't control you. They can, they, they can try to influence your decision, but they cannot make you do what you're going to do because you have free will. And so what happened was, is I, long story short, I came to that verse in Ezekiel I told you about years ago. It says, someone has to stand for the land. He said all these, and it's a, it's a passage in Ezekiel 22 where it says, the princes and the priests were stealing money. Uh, and I was going to destroy the land, someone st- stood for the land. I was like, oh, same situation. And so I did. I wrote the checks. Like, wait a second, that's wrong. Well, because in order to do what was right, I had to write the checks. But because I'm the chief financial officer, they were no good. I moved all the money out of the account into the savings account, so all the checks went boingy, 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 boingy. Because I then called the, the bishop and said, here's, here's what's going on, here's what's going on, I'm protecting the money from the church, but I need to give time for the authorities to come in and deal with the situation. So I gave the checks into their hands, but they were absolutely worthless. You know what? That was over, I got my first death threat. The pastor of the church came into my face, got in the face, he's like five foot nine, I could have beat the snot out of him. And he screamed at me, God, you're blah, 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 and, 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 you're going to die. And I'm like, okay. And he said, I'm going to kill you. I'm like, okay, fine, go ahead. Because his check was 30000 He said, but it wasn't right. Now, long story short, that's how I came to be here today. Uh, because I stood for the land and God blessed me. Good old situation. Six months later, uh, the new pastor came in. First thing he did was fire me because I was too close to the other guy. And the bishop didn't even give me the church because he thought I was too close to the other guy. But I'm the guy that turned them in and sent them and turned all the money. But you know what? I, I, I've learned from a lot of their experiences that did not do what not to do. I know it's where God wanted to be one day. And the whole time, then, I know time to the whole story how God blessed me financially and things happened. And all because I did what was right. Just so you know, that church that did all that, all those people were out of the ministry. <laughs> They're all suffering. <laughs> Second of all, the new guy that came on, he didn't respect what I did. And, didn't, and the, the bishop who didn't res, uh, take care of me, they all have since been fired. One person got caught stealing money again, too. And the church itself went, pfft. But you know what? Since that day, I've always got, God's always blessed me with more and more in my life. Every church I've gone to since then, I've taken a pay cut, but I have more money in my bank account. You know why? Because I honor God. Refuse to do what the world does. Pressure. We've got to refuse that. We've got to be like these three Hebrew kids, because it comes to this verse here. This is what they say. This is what they said to the king. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, Okay, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, our king, that we do not serve your gods, nor we worship the gold image which you have set up. So here's what happens. They're under what? A lot of pressure. Like we are, right? I was under a lot of pressure too. I thought I ruined my family. Because when they, because uh, I did that and then they let me go because I saved the church, which is really strange. At that point in time, I hadn't really learned the idea. I was young and I hadn't really learned the idea of, you know, saving for the future and all that and it was Christmas time and all that. And I felt horrible. But God brought me through it to show me, you know what? doesn't matter if you have any money. God's going to bless you. For six months, I made, I worked for Jackson Hewitt, making about $300 after taxes, $400 a month. My mortgage payment was $1,300 a month. I haven't eaten yet. I'm still $100 down. Six months later, when I left, I had $8,000 in my account. Don't know where the money came from. I know where it came from. God put it in there. It just would show up. I, I, I'd come home. I was, I, 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 I pass, I, at that church, I still pastored there. They asked me for those six months while I was there when they fired me. 
let me go. Actually, let me go. Uh, they live on the stage, too. They, the, the new pastor said he, I had somewhere else to go, and I was leaving because I wanted to. That wasn't the case. And so I helped this small church for six months that only had about 30 or 40 people, all about 70 years old or older. And, uh, and every week I would come home, and there'd be money. I, 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 to this day, I can't tell you where it all came from. You know what? God is good. The thing is, like, this, like these three Hebrew children said, whether God protects us or not, I'm going to do the right thing. That's the key. We have to refuse to give into the pressure of the world to give up on Jesus. We have to refuse not to do the right thing. We have to refuse, I'm sure I said that right. We have to refuse to make sure that we do the right thing. Not do the wrong thing. Okay, there we go. Uh, we need to do that because here's the deal. We can't, people say, well, because we always make the, the, these um, decisions. Well, will this or will this not hurt me? Well, see, these three Hebrew children say, you know, whether God delivers or not, we don't care. We're going to serve God. We're going to refuse to bow down to the pressure that you're putting on us. See, the problem with a lot of Christianity, especially today, is, well, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Oh, what, what, what? Well, well, we'll wait and see when God comes through, then we'll rise up again. Now, that, that's not the faith God blesses. God blesses the faith that says, even if God doesn't come through, I'll still believe what? Anyways, will you be able to say this? Jesus, I refuse to give in to the pressure. Because here's the deal. We want the pressure to be gone and then believe. God wants you to know, can you believe him when the pressure's on? Because that's what makes a true believer. Because everybody can be a fair weather fan, can't they? See, a couple things we go, well, what if he doesn't? That's the biggest people th- question people ask, especially right now. I have a question. Are you sure? You know, people have come down with COVID in the church now. For the entire 2020, almost nobody did. Why is it happening now? I, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. Do I still believe in God's protection for our church? Yes. Do I still believe God's making a difference? Yes. You know what? He can make difference in things. What God says, no matter what happens, still trust in him and refuse even though the obstacle is in your way. You know what makes a Christian's faith uh, more valid than anything else? Is that we believe even though there's an obstacle. Because people will say, hey, look, this happened to you. This happened to the church. And that's when the church has to rise and say, yeah, that's, that's right, something did happen. Why? I can't explain it. Because I'm not God. But here's what I can say. I don't care what happens. I still refuse to not believe in Jesus. I still believe in all the you sets of God. Because here's the thing. Just because he's not doing something right now in front of our face doesn't mean he's not what? Doing something. You know, how we deal with obstacles speaks so much more about our faith You know, if you want to answer your skeptics, here's how you answer your skeptics. By how you deal with difficulties in your life. Do you complain about God or do you praise God when problems happen? Because if you praise God when problems happen, that means God's still number one in your life. That means you still trust God. And guess what? The pressure doesn't have to expand, doesn't have to get into the red area because God can move in your life. When you stop giving up on God or complaining, doesn't mean you can't ask questions. But say, I still am going to praise God and believe for the best. And that's when the pressure meter goes down. Because God says, I will do that for you. Now, how we deal with the battles answers the skeptics. Sometimes God allows things to happen in our lives so people can see how much faith we really have. Because remember, the life is what? Short. We're all going to die of something someday. But we're not going to die. We're going to go live with Jesus right away. Isn't that great? I'm not in any hurry. But our life is used for one reason only. If Jesus is the cause of our vision, what have you done with him in your life? He gives us opportunities to reach people in unique ways. And second, though, what if he does do it so all can see? 
See, the point of seeing miracles in life is saying when you see the pressure, you see the bad thing coming against you, and you say at that moment in time, I don't care if God doesn't do anything, I'll still believe. See, the problem with a lot of Christians is, but if God, I I need God to do something before I believe. Or if God doesn't do something, I'm going to leave God. Because we're so short-sighted. We don't see the whole big picture. God does. And the big picture is, one day you're going to have a brand new body, you're going to never get sick, never die, never get old, and never have any bad memories or anything like that. God's going to take all that from you so you can have joy forever. Isn't that awesome? Forever. But sometimes he does do things on earth. Why? Not for you. So those around you can see the, the glory of God. Sometimes he sees it by how you deal with your struggle. And sometimes he gives you those little gifts we talks about by dealing with it right there. And you know what? If you have this attitude, whether God does it or not, I don't care. I'm not going to stop believing in God. I refuse. That's the key to miracles happening, like what happened here with the three Hebrew guys. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They are not hurt, and the form is like the fourth is like the Son of God. By the way, it wasn't like the Son of God. It was the Son of God. Jesus showed up. They said, I don't care. I'm going to refuse to give in to the pressure. And they got thrown in the fiery furnace. And nothing happened to them. But I want to look at this a little bit more because you got to see really all about this story. You might never have seen before. Here's what God will do for you when you're going through these things. Number one is this. It says, Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he spoke and commanded that the heat, the furnace, seven times more than it was usually heated. Nebuchadnezzar was mad, so he decided to heat the fiery furnace seven times hotter than ever. Why? Because he wanted to make sure those guys were toast. He wanted to go in there and be gone instantly. He was mad. Mad as a hornet. They had defied him. You know what? If you truly live Christianity the way it should be done, people are going to be mad at you. They're going to think you're defying what the world says. You know what? That's right. We will defy what the world says. Because you know what? We believe in what Jesus says. And what a fantastic thing he did there. But these deals... You know, you got to think, what he's saying here is no matter how hot your situation you think it is. And here's the thing you got to understand. Everybody's going to look at their obstacles differently. You might look at someone's obstacle and say, wow, why are they complaining about that? That's not so bad. How do you know it's not so bad for them? It might be the furnace seven times hotter than they ever had it before. Someone else might have something else. Everybody's perception, no matter how, you know, the, 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 the kitchen is as hot as you want it to be based on your own perception. But here's the deal. If Jesus is in the right spot and you're willing to live by Daniel three sixteen to 18, Jesus says no matter how hot it gets, it's not going to affect you. He'll take the pressure, he'll take the heat away. You can live and walk around in it and it won't affect you. Doesn't mean the problem is there. The furnace was still there, but it was not what? Affecting them. Next thing we find out about is about the guards. Two things about the guards. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed the men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the three guys are thrown in, and the three soldiers throwing them in, or maybe six soldiers, who it's probably more than three. And I'm sure Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego didn't say, oh, go ahead and just throw us in. I'm sure they had to rigor them down and, and, and cast them in. Because you know what? Even though Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego made that amazing statement of whether God is for us or not, we don't care, we're not going to give up on God, whether he delivers us or not. I'm sure on the way down to the furnace, they were doing everything they could not to get put in the fiery furnace. They're humans. They still had some doubt in their mind. Just because you have doubt doesn't mean you don't have faith in God. It means you're human. And he takes them and what? He throws them in. But the gall of the guards who were taken down got burnt to a crisp. 
Here's what this means. The people of this world that come against you, they're the ones who are going to get singed by their own traps. God's going to put it back on them. But even crazier about this is, is the next verse, or actually the verse before, and he commanded, what's it say underlined? Certain mighty men of valor. Certain mighty men of valor. The people that the king chose to put them in the fire furnace were the best of his best. They were his marines. He didn't choose lowly guards but now. He chose the best of his best, and they got they, and who got toasted? His best soldiers. That means whatever the world brings against you, if you truly hold to the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which is also the faith of the apostles, the faith of all uh, the prophets, all the people you read about in the Bible, that no matter what man brings against you, God's still greater. Man can bring his best. And over the next few years, that might be the case. Politically, uh, in different areas. It uh, could be uh, in the way people treat people, how things are with the pandemic and all their things. But you know what? God doesn't care how big man roars. God roars bigger. And the last thing that I got out of this, out of this area here is verse 27. And they saw these men on whose bodies had the fire had what? No power. You know, back in ancient times, fire was the thing. Today we have other things. Nothing man could do has any power over Jesus or over anyone who has Jesus in their heart. The hair of their head was not singed, nor their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. This shows us when we refuse to give in to the pressure, God doesn't not just take care of us. He took care of how we come out smelling. He took care of their clothes. He took care of not just their internal body organs, not even the hair of their head was singed. Isn't that great? Nothing will touch you, says the Lord. God says that we have this ability to refuse the pressure of this world. This is what God will do for us. doesn't say you won't face the pressure. But how we face the pressure gives God the opportunity for two things. Our bodies can then be used to bring people to Jesus by how we respond. Whether God delivers or not. Because there's sometimes in Scripture God didn't deliver Okay? But when he did it, he used their, their, their life to what? Bring others. I'll give you an example. Stephen. Acts chapter 7. First martyr. Full of the Holy Spirit in front of the first deacons. He gets killed. Well, I don't, actually, I don't know if he got killed. Because heaven opened up. I wonder if God just took him right to heaven. I think many times for Christians, we're taken to heaven before we actually die. I think that's what God does. No weapon will hurt us. No sickness will actually hurt us. I've seen so many times, I've seen people right before they die, seeing a light, and they're telling me God's calling them through, and I see them go joyfully. Now, I think God, God, God's very creative. Don't ever take away what God can do in a moment, instance. But we have to refuse. I've also been by people in their deathbeds who... We're worried sick because they didn't have that right relationship with Jesus. When you have that right relationship with Jesus, you don't have to worry about that. Because God's there for you. Refuse to give the pressure on let God use your circumstances to bring people to Jesus. And then you get treasures of heaven that last forever. You get rewards that last forever in heaven. And then God can come through and God will always come through. Give him wide latitude to do that and see what he can do. This is as much for me as for you. <clears throat> we, can either ref- we can either let the world continue to dominate us and push us around, or we can refuse to let that happen and say, you know what? We're going to start pushing the world around. It's about time true Christians start doing that. The worship, t- well, worship team that's here today, <laughs> come on forward. 
We're going to sing that song one more time. The world wants to see action right now. They're demanding action. On every side. <clears throat> Our action is simply this. Refuse to give in to the pressure <clears throat> of the world. Don't let the world dominate you. Don't let the pressures of this life dominate. Don't let the pressures of the situation dominate you. Let Jesus deal with the pressure. God puts you where you are in the place where you are for a reason. Yeah, there will be financial things. There will be relationship things. There will be all I mean, the list goes on. But pressure falls on your hand. Jesus wants to take that off you. All you got to do is what? What do you got to do to get rid of the pressure? Thank you. I, 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 I refuse our word. There's 12 other way, things we're going to refuse this year. Refuse that. This is the first one because right now we're starting out the year under a lot of pressure. If you're at home today and you're not feeling well, say, but God, you said, I can refuse the pressure. I can refuse the sickness. What do you got to lose? And those around you, hey, say, I still believe in God no matter what. That's the faith that God rewards. The God does not restore the faith. Well, God, if you do this, and that, that's not the faith God rewards. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Do you believe God in the good times and the bad times? And just so you know, even when you're in bad times, are you really ever in a bad time if you have God? Because you have the solution is always in front of you. The worst thing that happens is you get to get promoted to heaven. That's the worst possible thing that could happen. You know where you're going to be forever. So whatever happens on this planet really doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. Well, I said the word heck on church. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no board, oh, one board member here today. I might get fired. Okay, so. That's what it is. We've got to refuse to do that. And if we do that, God's going to bless us in 2021 with miracles like we see in this story here today. That's what he told me on December 23rd. That's the kind of miracles I want to see. But it's a corporate thing that we need to do together. And so we're going to end today with simply this. If you truly believe that today, sing this song out with all your heart. If you're at home today, sing this out with all your heart. Make your altar at, at, at home and wherever it is. If you want to come to the front, you can. I'm not, I'm not going to make that because of everything that's going on. But you know what? Let's just sing that. The words are so powerful. Hope you listen to them the first time through. It's a, such a powerful song. We're not going to sing it every week for all 52 weeks. We are going to sing it every first Sunday. For this month, we might sing it every week because just to get it kind of in the consciousness of the people. Um, but I don't know about you. I refuse to give in to the pressure. I know what God has said, and I say, but God, you said, I'm holding you to them. <laughs> Because you know what? That's my, 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 my wagon's attached to him. And it's attached to him for not only me, but for all of you. So let's end the service today by singing this song. Sometimes I, I just want to close my eyes and act like everyone's alright when I know they're not. This world needs God, but it's easy here to sit and watch. I could say a prayer and just move on.
As we accept this word this year, help us, Lord, to refuse the world and cling to you like never before. Help us, Lord, to go out and help the world to know that they can refuse what the world says and believe in something better. Help us be that light. And bless us as we go this week. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Good boy. And remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And you are awesome.